Welcome. What is up? Thank you for tuning to Jim Roman's Burning. I've got a great Thursday show for you. A Hall of Fame head coach and the author of a new book, Game Plan for Life, Joe Gibbs, will be my guest. But first, here is what I am burning on. A bizarre was Rick Pitino's presser yesterday. Under the circumstances, he seemed to be running the what to do if you impregnate a woman who's not your wife in a restaurant and then pay for her abortion playbook to perfection until he went with this inappropriate and bizarre reference. I came here at a very difficult time when 9-11 hit. You needed a, a community uh, to get you over it. In New York City, uh, it was easy because everybody knew the devastation of that and they got each other over it in louisville it wasn't the impact wasn't obviously felt like new york city but i needed this community to help me get over it he didn't just invoke 9 11 and then use it to rationalize or explain that behavior did he as if to say that maybe that wouldn't have happened if not for 9 11 or is he asking the community to support him as it did when he needed it after 9 11. I really don't know what he's reaching for. I just know that it has nothing to do with anything. Memo to coaches and athletes and celebrity tweeters. You do not want to use 9-11 as an analogy for anything because it's not like anything else. The proper play is to just own it, apologize for it, mean it, and then just keep moving. But don't rationalize it, explain it, or make an excuse for it, or somehow try to compare it to 9-11. And while there is a morals clause in his contract, I think he will survive this. Certainly others have been blown out for much less offensive actions. Mike Price went down hard and fast with Alabama, but that's because he had no goodwill in the bank there. Larry Eustachie did not stand a chance when he was photographed crushing natty lights with college co-eds, but how could he? He's Larry Eustachie. Patino, though, will get through this the way he always has, by recruiting and winning. Win and you're in, win and you're forgiven, but lose and you're immoral. He'll be judged on his morality and whether or not he brought shame to that university in March, but not now, because as humiliating as this debacle is, it's still not as shameful as losing to Kentucky or getting bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament, because in this case, the bottom line is the bottom line. As many of you have seen, uh, the ruling came down from the league in terms of Dante, uh, in terms of Dante Stallworth, so he'll be suspended for the year. I can say that I respect the commissioner very much, and I respect the process, and I respect the decision. And our focus, mine, and the team's focus is, is on the task at hand, and I'm getting ready for for this season. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has suspended Dante Stallworth for a year without pay for violating the league's personal conduct policy and substance abuse policy. He was given a 30-day jail sentence after pleading guilty to DUI manslaughter in connection with a crash where he struck and killed a pedestrian. So, there is societal law and then there is Roger law. And Goodell is looking to protect and defend the shield at every single turn. Stallworth had to know that a year without pay was probably his best case scenario. Whether or not this punishment has anything to do with the public's perception that Stallworth's short stint is completely out of whack with Michael Vick having to do nearly two years for animal abuse is something only Goodell knows, but societal justice and NFL justice are not one and the same. Once you're through with the judge, you still have to deal with the sheriff, Roger Goodell, and the shield is his badge. And in this case, a year without pay is just. That punishment does fit that crime. Huge ups to Philadelphia Phillies center fielder Shane Victorino because any outfielder who goes into Wrigley Field knows he's going to get an earful of smack from Cubs fans, but Victorino is the only guy to get a face full of beer in the middle of a play, which he made. Check it out. Routine fly ball to center. Track it. Wait for the dirt. Reach for the IV in. Oh! A jerk hits him in the grill with an old style. Man's game for making that play, Shane. Look, I get wearing goggles during clubhouse champagne celebrations, but you shouldn't have to goggle up in the outfield. There are fans who sit in the bleachers, and then there are bleacher bums. This cat is the latter. Number one, you're wasting an $8 beer. Number two, be glad that Victorino is classier than you because we know what happens when beer meets jock on the playing field. Don't we, Ron Ron? People get punched, and they get choked. Because as we all know, getting a drink thrown in your face is the ultimate reason to go. Somebody beaters you in the face, and it is go time. Throwing an opponent's home run back on the field, still cool. Throwing a beer in an opponent's face, inexcusably lame, and a reason to get your chicklets blasted right out of your head. That guy's lucky. If he ever gets within three blocks of the confines ever again, 
That is if they find the right guy. Biggest non-story of training camp, Derek Anderson's transmitter dying in his bucket and having to get the play calls from the sideline via hand signals. Hand signals that Brady Quinn, the guy who's trying to rip Anderson's job, then allegedly relayed to the defense. Both quarterbacks and the head coach, Eric Mangini, have denied it. The quarterbacks were even seen laughing about it. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. What, Brady is going to crack the code for the secondary of the orange team and then tell them a wipe down the forearm followed by a fist means double slants and covering one eye and giving a thumbs up means an inside zone play. Got it, guys? Now I'm done. Now I'm done. It's pro football, not Tecmo Bowl or Madden. It's just not true. Look, I wish it were, but not nearly as much as the Browns fans wish it were true because they want Quinn to rip that gig and they don't care if he does have to cheat to get it. After all, the first thing I ever learned in sports is if you're not cheating, you're not trying, and it's only cheating if you get caught. Quinn, though, is going to win that battle, and he does not have to cheat to do it. Now I'm done. Now I'm done. Coming up next, Hall of Fame head coach Joe Gibbs will be my guest. Don't go anywhere.